and um, element five right here, it's about optimizing your surroundings. And um, when I when I started this program, you know, it was 2020. We were in the middle of COVID. I don't think anybody had good surroundings, and a lot of us were isolated or we were coping through, you know, whatever was going on. And um, so, if you look at the first page on page 124 of optimizing your surroundings, it says, "Look at your surroundings and see how we recruit um, the people." Look at the surroundings and see how we can recruit the people, modify places and change the things that touch your world. So what that does is you create a micro habit and environment um, to create this healthy life. Um, they talk about building a bubble of support. And so this community call, if you're on this, clearly you are seeking a healthy environment, a support system, to grow in and, um, um, you know, we are all like-minded. We are wanting to get healthy. And so a lot of times the things that we're doing are, um, you know, our, our friends, our family, things like that, they may not have the same health goals. And so really focusing on creating that environment of people that are going to encourage you on your health journey is really important um in optimizing the relationships um in your micro environment so this has just been a really really good chapter um dr a wrote this um the habits of health transformation system is the curriculum of our entire program if you're new to the program and um, you know, I know a lot of people think, you know, the fuelings is the program, but that's just a tool to get you to your healthy weight to make it convenient. Um, but this is really the transformation system is instilling these ha healthy habits in your life. Um, so, um, Noelle, have you, um, have you experienced anything with, um, I know it talks about the the cool, open, curious growth um, and the no mindset and then the hot, closed, defensive mindset. I know that you were really good in, um, in helping me realize my reaction to things. Um, yeah, it definitely makes a difference when you're, um how you respond to things, it create, creates the emotions that you react to those things with, you know, and you can be flying off the handle and, you know, when the woman in the car line is trying to back into you and she's honking and you have nowhere to go. It, it, it was a, I had this true illustration at our kid's school where, you know, we were all in the circle car line. She had pulled into the spot that to get herself locked in and she's honking and trying to back out and literally at that you know, off the chain, she got out of her car, started videoing my license plate in my car, even though I'm just in the car line following everybody else. And meanwhile, my kids are in the car watching all of this. And I, and one of my kids said, mommy, she needs element four in the life. <laughs> and so it really does just show, you know, that how, and maybe, maybe four years prior, before I had started working on this hot and cold and go and no system, I, I don't know, I maybe I would have gotten back gotten out and had words or honk back or I, I don't know probably if I, if I you know sit down and think about it but it was just such as I didn't even turn to look who she was I didn't want to have a bad ill feeling towards her and so I just they they're like she's filming our car and I'm like just look forward just look forward. <laughs> you know but I instantly I thought oh bless her heart what is she struggling with because it's not this car line it's you know whatever else is going and it's how your your, your reactions handle so I imagine when she left that situation that she probably felt like she either needed to cram a cheeseburger down her throat or have a glass of wine or six, you know, that her emotions were at the, the top of the, but it would have most likely ended in a, a food or a drink situation that would not have served her well and served her emotions well. So um, 
I, again, like I said, I don't even know who it is. So I can't even really pray for her because I intentionally didn't even look at the car because I just thought I'm going to have bad feelings towards that person for a long time if we stay here at this school. So, but it was just such a great example. And our, and my, our kids said, my, they, they literally said, she needs element four and element five in the life book. So I, we challenge you to really read through that section. We don't, like Renee said, we don't have enough time to teach you every little thing, but just to give you life application and examples of how it all works. So when you get time, go back through that section and dig into it deeper um, and really examine, okay, how am I handling myself in these situations in these emotional times? So thank you. Yes, that's great. Um, so I love these co coffee chats. I know we just started this a few weeks ago, but they have been so, so helpful to just come together and have community. Um, it really challenged me to dig into my life book more and really look at you know, element five. And that was kind of a reflection of this last year and a half of um, switching, switching paths and saying, you know, does this pattern serve me? Do these relationships serve me? Um, so um, I don't know, like if anybody has started on their journey and realized that the pattern that they were living before their journey was kind of derailing them every weekend. Maybe you were going out with friends, getting drinks, things like that. Um, but your environment is really important in your success of your program or, you know, kind of derailing you on that. Um, but yeah, we, um, let's see. So let's go to, Let's go to page 136, if everybody has that. Um, and that's where you can ask these questions when something happens, like Noel was saying, you know, what's happening? Um, and this is in your reaction. Um, say something happens and um, you're like, what is happening? What did I want to happen? What's missing and what's next? I can tell you. I did really well on my journey and then I kind of slipped back a little bit in my health and I kind of looked back at, okay, <laughs> you know, I asked myself these questions like, thank you, Noah, um, that's perfect. What's happening? What did I want to happen? What's missing and what's next? And so when I realized I was getting off track in my journey, I looked back at when I was having success and I made sure I just really implemented those steps that I had taken in the beginning. So um, getting back on track with my journey, really waking up, filling up my water, creating habits in the morning um, that were going to get me back on track. Um, and just kind of identifying the things that are missing and what's next to create that, that um, pattern that you wanna go into. So, Noelle, you can go to the next one. Perfect. This is wonderful. Okay. Um, go back one more to improving the relationships. Okay. If we can make a list of five friends, they say that the five friends around us are the most like us. They're going to they're gonna be the greatest influence on our lives. So if you think about the five people that are closest to you, are they healthy? Are they steering you towards your health? Are they encouraging you on your journey? Or are they the friends that say, oh, you can have that piece of pie. You can come out with us on the weekend. You can have this drink. What's it gonna hurt? Because when you list the five friends that are closest to you, um, you really want those people to be supporting you in your journey. Um, the accomplices, that kind of sounds like, a, you know, a, uh, superhero movie, The Accomplices, but those are the people that can derail your journey. They're the people that, you know, are close to you. Maybe you care about them and, you know, they can, in your mindset, they can kind of throw your journey for a loop because um, maybe they're not encouraging in what you're doing. So um, I encourage you to make a list of people in your life that are going to build you up. That's why this community is so important. Um, stepping into coaching has brought 
friends that feel like family into my life that have encouraged me on my journey. Whereas before I may not have, um, changed those relationships that were derailing my journey because nobody wants to isolate themselves. But when you can, you know, have friends of like-minded that are going to build you up, that's when, that's when you're going to have the encouragement. Go ahead and go to the next one. And skip one more. Perfect. Um, so here you look at personal stress and environment stress. So these are a lot of things that can throw you off of your journey. Um, either you're tired, you're stressed out, um, your reaction to stress is going to affect your health and it's gonna affect your journey. I know usually at the end of the day is the worst. Um, maybe it's the stress of kids, maybe it's the stress of a spouse, work, whatever it is. And to identify those things and realize, you know, what are these going to, um, how are these gonna, gonna derail my health or how are they gonna help me is really, really important. Um, go ahead and go to the next one. And so these are the tips to improve the relationships in your life that can really pour into you and help you. Um, so say something stressful happens, you're in a meeting or whatever, um, you immediately sense your breathing and you cool down before you speak, you take a breath. So you're not um, just flying off the handle in your reaction. You're taking a breath, you're taking a step back, you're cooling down. Maybe you take a drink before you speak. That's very helpful. Um, choosing a response that will improve your health. Count to 10 before responding. I think this is great um, in all areas of relationships. Um, sleeping on it. Maybe you get an email or a text message or something at night. Sometimes it's better to sleep on it before responding um, and just get a better night's sleep. Smile, be appreciative, think positive, be open and curious um, when you're challenged. So all of those things are gonna improve relationships around you. But um, really, you know, the relationships have such a huge, um, they just change your relationship and your journey. Um, go ahead and go to the next one. Okay. So, you know, in when we re review this, it says, you know, what does it mean to you right now? What does this element give you the opportunity to reflect on? So has anybody read element five and used it in your life and in your journey to evaluate relationships or change your reaction based on the knowledge that you've read in element five on your journey? Can, that, can anybody share any personal experience of how this element has helped you or um, assisted you on your journey? Can you think yeah, of I'll throw, one out, I'll throw one out there because Dr. A is the master of always taking a sip. If you've ever heard him or seen him speak in person, he talks about that of just stopping and taking a sip of water and, and not responding. So he's, he's got that mastered. And also the other thing we touch on, and we touch on it a lot in coaching about responding, about how we respond is flipping the script of saying, instead of thinking, why is this happening to me? It's why is it happening for me? And what is it? What am I to learn out of this? And when you, it's happening for a reason. And so it's really that being open and curious that that line that was there is, is not just a, a nice thing to say or whatever. It's truly like, what can I learn? What can I pull out of this? You know, God has designed this to occur, you know, or has allowed me to step into the situation or whatever that it is, you know, what, what is it for me here that I'm to learn and that I'm to, um, you know, who is it? Who's next? Who's the person I'm to love on or, or whatever the situation is. So it really is important if you can um, approach each day or each scenario, that stress and that challenge with that attitude of curiosity 
and that it's happening for you and not against you, you're not the victim. You're, you're then in control and it helps you not emotional eat. And, you know, because if we're always the victim, we always want to have that emotional eating go along with it. So if you can say, I'm in charge here, you know, what, what's here for me, you know, what am I getting out of this? Then you're in control still. And it's not, you know, it's not slapping you around as much as it would, would have otherwise. Yeah. I see Susie's hand up. Susie's my mom. Go ahead and take yourself off mute, mom. There you go. I did it. <laughs> this is the first time ever. Um, I just wanted to add something. I read um, last night, I, I did my reading before I went to bed. And so I really haven't had a chance to apply it. But when you were just talking about taking a sip and um, I remember reading last night about taking the sip and pausing and counting to 10. Not only does it give you time to diffuse and cool down, but the person that has been uh, irritating or agitating, causing that in your calmness and your pauses and your delay, it also gives them a chance to diffuse. <laughs> Yeah. And um, so it's kind of twofold. And uh, I think it's really a great tool and I plan on using it. <laughs> I think you do use it because you taught me that my whole <laughs> life and not, not, you know, 100% all the time, but, you yeah. know, reading this chapter, I'm very grateful that you've instilled a lot of those things in me. I think sometimes we are unaware of you know, um, relationships that sneak in that kind of, you know, pull us down. And so just becoming more aware of the people in your life or the relationships or the patterns that are happening so that you can intentionally do this more. Right. But, I think, I think it's a great tool. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Helen. Uh, this goes back just a little bit that I want to throw out there too about yeah. how to surround, uh, how to recruit people into your circle. And I, Usher and I'm on the prayer team at church. So I'm there for a long period of time. So I have to take fuelings with me. And I always take the shake because it's in the Optavia bottle. Yeah. So I have that with me. And it's amazing because just all kinds of like-minded people are like, you're on Optavia. Oh, wow. So am I. And then we exchange numbers and then they kind of become friends and it's a really big church. So it's nice to be able to kind of attract them in, but that's just one way to recruit like-minded people. <laughs> Absolutely. And, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the whole how you re react and, and your relationships. I love reading. I love reading the, you know, the life book. And then, and I know it's true because it matches up with the word of God. Everything mm -hmm. that you, when you're reading the Bible, it's always, you know, about relationships and improving your relationships and loving God and loving people. So that's just another way that you can help yourself in this way is to make sure you get back in your Bible. And, you know, I know this is an old cliche, but, you know, what would Jesus do? <laughs> yeah. In your reaction, your reaction and your response and that, yeah, I agree. I feel like, you know, uh, we are called to be set apart and also in Optavia, it's the same thing to be above that line. I know we talked last week about being above or below the line in our response and our reaction. Um, and that's something that we have to make a conscious effort to do. Um, <laughs> this book also talks about, um, you know, the, the hot, I know I didn't explain it very well. It's, you know, kind of nerve wracking being on you know, a Zoom call or whatever, but, you know, what really spoke to me is it says, you know, you have this response, the cool or no, or the hot or go response. And, you know, back in the ancient days, this hot or go flight reaction was for survival. And we're not being chased by 
you know, these animals anymore. But when somebody makes a snarky comment or challenges us or hurts our ego, we immediately have that response. And so he challenges us to use this cool or no mindset so that we are taking that sip, taking time to say, I know better. That does not that doesn't have to affect my journey. I don't have to fly off the handle. I can have that calm reaction and think through it. And so um, I really encourage everybody to, to be in their life, but to go through the elements. Another thing that's really, really helpful is um, on YouTube. They have all the elements. Um, there's a YouTube channel and I just Google Optavia life book element five and the YouTube will come up for every single element in there. And they spend 30 minutes, action packed 30 minutes of going in depth through this chapter of the life book. And it's just so helpful in how they explain it. So if you guys haven't gotten into your life book, the YouTube is really, really helpful in explaining it in depth, all the different things that Dr. A has written about. But does anybody else have? Okay. Um, Tammy yeah. has her hand up and then Phyllis okay. has her hand up next. Perfect. Go ahead, Tammy. Good morning. Um, Hi. I just wanted to comment on the taking a sip. Mm -hmm. um, before I ever even knew what Optavia was, I teach middle and high school. That's my whole career. And I've taught in some pretty rough schools. And years ago, that was, I would always keep coffee on my desk mm -hmm. so that when a kid did something that, you know, I was afraid I would say something that you know, in anger or whatever respond, that was my go-to was I would just get that coffee and I would just take a sip to give me a breather before I responded to the kid so that I could respond, you know, appropriately and professionally, you know. So for me, now what I'm thinking about in here is I just need to change my coffee to my water. <laughs> I still teach middle school and, you know, those middle schoolers can be a little bit um, challenging and um, have, my, have my sip. And the other thing is, for me, is recognizing the difference between reacting and responding. And, and my typical thing in the past has been, you know, reacting and learning to respond, taking the time to think and respond instead of reacting is a huge difference. Um, because we don't always react in the most appropriate way sometimes. So that's a huge thing for me is learning the difference in that. And then I'm kind of in the middle right now of building that bubble for me and trying to figure out, because um, I have a very small circle. I'm social and I have a lot of acquaintances, but probably not a lot of friends. Um, and trying to figure out who, who are my friends and who my accomplices are and, and building that security bubble. Um, and that's a difficult thing for me um, because a lot of my friends are in fact accomplices um, where, oh, that won't hurt you this time. It's, you know, one, one coke's not going to hurt or what, and not, not meaning to derail me, but, right. you know, um, and so I'm, I'm having difficulty with that, maybe feeling disloyal if I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like if I was trying to build my safety bubble um, that's a difficult chore for me. And, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm working on that, but. It, that's it great that you recognize that. That's fantastic because when you see that and you recognize it, then you're intentional to create that more and to be more aware of it. That's fantastic. So it's a process. We're working yeah. on it. It's a process. Yeah. So anyway. Phyllis. Okay. Phyllis and then Tara Lynn. <laughs> Hi guys, I just wanted to say that being in a leadership role as a nurse leader, I've, I've done that for probably 20 years plus, and then to step into a coaching role was a different change for me, different, a little bit of a different mindset, but I enjoy the coaching part of it and learning how to respond differently to things and not to take things personally. Like when I talk to someone and their response back to me is maybe negative towards the program or what I'm talking to them about, or they're not on board with something I'm trying to help them with that I have to stop and think it's maybe it's not right for them right then. Maybe it's they're They can't hear it right now because sometimes you have to say it over and over again, or 
give them time to process it before you go back to it. Um, so that kind of thing, just helping them and helping myself with how I respond to that. Yeah. So that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Tara Lynn. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, no, we can't. Uh, I saw that the mute was off, but no, I don't hear you. Um, I don't know if it works without the headphones. If you unplug the headphones, will it work? Will the will the audio come on? Maybe. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, now? we got it. <laughs> okay. Um. I haven't gotten to um, element five yet, but it does fall into place with all of the other elements. I've only gotten element two. Okay. So last night, Gretchen, who is my neighbor, who is my coach, amazing. She's my sister. And, okay. and we were talking and this fall, this is is like element two in that we need to determine satisfaction over pleasure and pleasure would have been to get out of that car noel and <laughs> say something but that would have been momentarily mm -hmm. um and then but you would not be satisfied with your actions so it all falls into place and i love the way it is and i love what um one young lady said about it's all about um god's word it all goes together and i love that that's how when, when i first started octavia i thought it wouldn't work for me because i have worked i mean i've had so many diets that have been an issue i've not lost any weight and gretchen was like yes this will work this will work you can do it <laughs> so i have lost eight pounds in four weeks that's a lot for me <laughs> and I feel good and I can wear shorts that I haven't worn in a while and but so on Monday I get up and I had lost the eight pounds so I said you know what I'm going to eat a piece of bacon <laughs> so I ate a piece of bacon <laughs> a, half, a half a slice of bacon and the next morning I weighed 2.2 pounds heavier so <laughs> I was like, um, okay, so what this program is doing for me is number one, I'm sticking to it. It's easy to stick to. Number two, when I eat something that I shouldn't eat for my pleasure, so to speak, um, it, it's letting me know what doesn't work for me. Like I really shouldn't eat bacon. Okay, so now that is one of those um, foods that I can take off of my plate because I'm not going to eat that anymore. Okay, now I'm not going to say that in 20 years from now I won't eat a piece of bacon, but like right now during my journey, I cannot. I have to mm -hmm. take it off of my plate. But um, I do want to say these Saturday morning meetings are very good for me. It's I don't know. I'm just, it's good to touch base on a weekly basis. I love the fact that we're going through the elements because last night I was trying to read some, I didn't get finished everything, but um, I am so thankful that Gretchen said, okay, you can do this. I know you can because yeah. with God's help, you know, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Phyllis, Phyllis just put in the chat, you could have turkey bacon. And I just cooked some of that up and we made a cob salad the other night and it was great. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I have <laughs> eaten turkey bacon before and it's of course not as good as the other, but <laughs> the bacon flavor, right? You have new taste buds now. You might be surprised. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, All right we got one Thank you. last person was Cheryl. Um, Cheryl has her hand up the last, last one there. And I think we are almost out of time. Go ahead, Cheryl. Good morning, everybody. Um, so yeah, this is a great element because I have really been tested this week. Um, and actually it started last week because I have a brand new car that isn't running. Think lemon, okay? And so it's been at the Ford dealership now 
Uh, this is its second week. And I have a loaner car and that's great. I'm enjoying it. But when the young man called me on Thursday or Friday to say, we still don't know what's going on. Um, and this car has less than 500 miles on it, mind you. Um, you know, there was that moment where I just wanted to say, are you kidding me? You know, and kind of lose it a little bit. And because of this program, because of all you great coaches out there um, leading the way and showing me how, um, yeah, I just said, oh, okay, well, um, I guess it is what it is. Like, go ahead and obviously you guys had gave me a loaner. So um, yeah, just keep me posted. That'd be great. And then, you know, on top of that, other things going to pick up stuff at the Walmart and all the chaos and the people cutting in front of me in the pickup line and different stuff like that. I was just kind of like, okay, well, let me just grab out these smoky barbecue crunchers and have a little snack and drink a seltzer and <laughs> I'll just wait like the rest of us. So it's been a really good, um, it's been really good for me. I feel really, really good about that. It's like a big, big win for me to keep it all together. So just wanted to share that. That's great. Uh, yeah, definitely this has helped you uh, realize what's in your control and what's not and how to respond consciously and doing all those things. Well, are we out of time? Yes, we are. Um, so this has been wonderful. Thank you all for hopping on here. I really encourage you to get in your life book. I know it's big, but if you go through one element each week or one element every two weeks, it doesn't take longer than that. And that YouTube video is really, really helpful in explaining everything in depth. Um, so if you, if you don't have the YouTube link, you can Google it, or you can reach out to your coach and they'll have the link, but that was really helpful when I started diving into the books. So thank you all for joining us and have a great Saturday and we will see you soon. Bye guys.